All right, I think we are live. Are we live? Yeah, I see it. All right, we're live. (laughs) Oh, I don't know, guys. OBS is causing me a major headache today, so not the regular format that uh, we've got. The new improved format will be back hopefully next week if I can get uh, OBS working again. So today you'll just have to look at the ugly kind of Skype chat window. Uh, It's kind of the best I can do on short notice. Uh, unfortunately, I can't really get, start setting up OBS until everybody's in the call. Uh, so depending on how long that takes uh, is how long I have to actually get the get OBS up and running. And uh, I'm not that familiar with OBS, so it takes me a little while. You're so right. It sounds okay. like the last two letters there are what matters the most. A lot of BS that you've Yeah, man. Up. OBS is not my favorite piece of software in the world. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I, it only runs correctly on Windows and runs correctly... <laughs> it's a shaky term yeah it is shaky i'm getting better at it as i go but i still got a lot to learn so how's it going everybody how are you guys doing today very good oh man feeling good the timer is, is counting down for the division or for vacation for vacation that is my yeah. division from this life so where so, are you going on vacation i'll be going to the bahamas that'll be nice, nice. Hey, i'll spend my birthday uh, out at sea with my wife eating good food and dancing and you know, playing games in the casino and wasting Is it money. like a cruise? Yeah. Nice. I've never been on a cruise. I'll let you know in two weeks what it's like. But my yeah. family, my dad goes every year. My brothers go, you know, two times a year. And I've never really? gone. Yeah, I've never gone on one. And so uh, this is something that I've been wanting to do. And I've never even flown on a plane. So this is a really big, big wow. deal for me. So you got to fly on the tr- plane to get there. Does it depart from Florida or the yep. Bahamas? And from then you Florida. sail to the Bahamas? Yep. Nice. How long is the cruise? It's a five-day cruise. Nice. Is it like all inclusive? Like everything? everything's inclusive. Nice. Everything but alcohol. Everything but drinks and I believe candy. But I want to take a you know. I mean, you don't drink anyway, but you're gonna spend no. a shitload on candy. I bet. He's <laughs> <laughs> a candy man. Remember? He is candy guy. <laughs> No, look, I will spend money on drinks. You guys forget my wife drinks, and I always have a good time when she does. <laughs> yeah. I can't stand hanging around with drunk people when I'm just sober. It's like the worst. <laughs> <laughs> I've had plenty of drunk days in the past, so I could probably just ad lib it. <laughs> they think I was just as drunk as them. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm, really, I'm really excited about it. Unfortunately, like I said, I won't be here next week, uh, but I'm sure you guys will keep the ship a sail. <laughs> we'll do our best. We'll do yes. our best, but we'll be missing. We'll be missing you. Thanks, man. Thank you. So, so what have you guys been playing, man? What's everybody been up to this week? Since I've already started yap, and let me continue on with the yap. <laughs> I right. uh, I told you guys, I believe last week that I upgraded my PS4 and Kate's PS4 to two terabytes. So I've been downloading like crazy, uh, trying to download all my games, the PS Plus stuff, all the big games that you don't normally have. I even downloaded. The Order 1886 for no reason. <laughs> so yeah, for real, you know, that lets you know <laughs> no I reason for that. <laughs> uh, and so I've been kind of going back through my back catalog, playing some games I really spent very little time on, trying some new stuff. Uh, this week I've been playing some Outlast, which is a game I probably spent an hour on previously when I first got my PS4. It's an incredibly scary game. I'm sure a lot of you guys have played that. Uh, I got Rainbow Six Siege and uh, played just a few matches of that with my wife and I've uh, been enjoying that. To me it's a pretty good uh multiplayer experience. Nothing special. I've also been playing the original Resident Evil remake on PS4. That's another game that I, I wanted to get into. Resident Evil the original was one of my pivotal survival horror games. I've been playing Sakura Samurai on my 3DS. Uh, we went over and watched the UFC fight last night of our brother's house. I spent about two hours playing that. It's on 3DS and it's a very the way that they implement the 3D in this game is totally amazing. I mean, for a person who normally doesn't see 3D, I had family and friends who were looking like, holy crap, how, how are they doing this? It's, it's a really fun game. I've been playing some Street Fighter V, uh, and I'm going to be doing a review of that probably before I go on, on my vacation. And I uh, played one of the greats, my good friend Sid Kid, yesterday, and he whooped my ass exactly the way I, I thought he would. Uh, I played some Bayonetta 2 on the Wii U. I bought that game two weeks ago. I finally uh, had a chance to play it Friday morning. And uh, that game is just as good as it was when it first came out. One of my favorite games, my game of the year 2014. Uh, and uh, Metal Gear Solid The Phantom Pain. I'm three hours in on that game and I don't think I've played anything like that this year. Uh, it's a totally different type of experience. 
It is a premium gaming experience. It is not like anything else. The production value, the characters, the voice acting, the way that they've implemented the, the camera, all this stuff seems like you're watching a AAA blockbuster film that you actually get to play, and I'm really excited. I was playing that in front of Kate. She's never been into Metal Gear. I think she played the one on PSP briefly. But when she saw like the first 30 or 40 minutes, she started downloading her PS4 immediately. So that's what I've been playing. I haven't gotten you know too deep into these games. I kind of wanted to go back and play some of my back catalog. I'll probably be doing a lot of that this week. And that's been my week in gaming. Nice. That's a big week. I know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's going to get even worse now. i got all these games downloading now. Are you going to bring any uh, games on your vacation with you? See, I wanted to bring my laptop, right? And uh, Kate was like, well, from all the stories I hear, the Wi-Fi is horrible on the ship. And she was like, you know, we got a safe in our room. You're going to have to hide your stuff. So I'll probably just end up taking either my 3DS or my Vita. You guys let me know in the comments what I should take, the 3DS or the Vita. Of course, I'll have my phone. Oh, uh, that's a tough one. Phone on yeah, that's, that's a tough one. I got some really good games on both. So I'll, I will do what you guys say in the comments. Which one Wait, do I take? If one goes <laughs> overboard, which one do you prefer to lose? If a case anything. <laughs> <laughs> that's a horrible good, question. That's a good ask. way to put it. <laughs> it's like, is it okay? Well, since, since you have like 10 3DS. Like, this is the new 3DS. And the I really new don't want to 3DS or the new 3DS? We need to it's, clarify this. It's Wait, the your new, new personally 3DS or the new 3DS? <laughs> Both. Because I kind of feel like my new 3DS is a little bit newer than your new 3DS. How yeah. new is your new 3DS? Uh, three months. I, no, let's mine is, all, mine is only two have weeks. a stub? Does it have a stub? Mine is only yes two no? weeks. <laughs> oh, so that's the new, new, new through 3DS. New. Yeah, you got it's the newer new 3DS. Okay, okay. got gotcha. it. Gotcha. Yeah, Don't so name shit like that, Nintendo. New. Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So I'll let the guys in the comments tell me which piece of hardware to take with me. All right. What have you guys been playing? Not too dirty. What have you been playing? You know what? I've just been playing a little bit of Blade and Soul and Super Hot. So it was the same games I played last week. Uh, I really like that game, Super Hot, though. It, it's just, this is a fun game, man. Just little things, like, it, it's so challenging, but, like, uh, little things, like, there would be guy, a, a guy that has, like, uh, uh, like, a sword or something like that, a uh, katana, and he comes chasing you, and you could throw something at him, and as soon as he drops his weapon, you could catch a weapon in the air and then cut him with it. So it's, like, little different things that you could do, which is a lot of fun. So... Um, have you gotten to the endless mode of that yet? No, no, I haven't. No. I, mean, I have like, I want to see what's gonna happen with this because, like, first of all, I'm not the best at this game. I'll tell you that right now because in the beginning, you're so used to like most games, you're you're used to just running out there and shooting things quickly. The whole point of the game is not to be that quick. Like mm. you're supposed to, you know, not make your move till you know exactly where you're gonna go next. So like, because the minute you move, the bullets move again. You know, yeah. everything happens when you move. So, like, if you stop, everything freezes. So even if they shot a bullet at you, it's not going to hit you until you decide where you're going to go. So you could dodge things just like that. So that it's kind of unique in a way that you have to, like, reverse. Like, you're, you're trying to take your time and decide where you're going to go before you actually do it. You know, and I think that's pretty cool. So. That is such an interesting yeah. gaming mechanic. I've never heard of anything like that. I love it. Um, yeah. There's a game that came out on PlayStation 3. I don't know if it came out on Xbox 360 years ago called Time Shift. I don't know if you guys remember this, but it was yep. a game where you were a first person, uh, it was a first person shooter, and you actually had the ability to stop time, slow down time, rewind time, mid combat. So you'd be running, you could, you could freeze time, you could run up on somebody and put a grenade on them, then you could run away and continue with time. And they'd be like, holy shit, they look down, there'd be a bomb on them, then they explode. Mm -hmm. I love the time mechanics. Yeah. And that sounds like something I definitely want to play. Now last week you were saying something about the potential of this maybe coming to console, you think that still might happen? Well, it, it's on Xbox Ones from what I heard. Like, it was supposed to be there. I don't know if it came out yet or not. I still haven't got that confirmed, but it does say Xbox One everywhere. Everyone I know is playing on PC or Mac. Well, one person I know playing on Mac. Everyone else is playing on PC. <laughs> but uh, Mac, what's that again? Yeah. <laughs> it's the best gaming platform in the universe. <laughs> yeah. I highly doubt that, Briar. That's Briar. Yeah. It is Robbie. Holy shit. <laughs> the voice of God just came out of nowhere and smacked that's, me down. That's definitely that's the voice Damn. of God. Just like, <laughs> God, that's so much but, uh, shit, I shouldn't yeah. say that anymore. The next thing I've been working on like this whole week was I'm trying to improve the, both channels. Like I'm trying to improve Twitch and YouTube, so I'm, I'm working on audio right now. I got mm. certain things for like video. You know, I got little 
snippets and stuff like that. But really, the audio is the main thing that I always wanted to improve. I never did. So I got like a new microphone right now, which I'll show you guys a video about. But it's, a, you know, uh, uh, Audio Technica. <laughs> Audio Technica 235. Or, man, tw sorry, I can't even talk about it. But Audio Technica is the one I have, all right? But, uh, is that a USB mic? That's the one I see in the picture right now, the, the black one? 2035 XLR. Mic. It's XLR. Yeah. Um, that's the thing, like, I wanted, I was, I, I got the, the Yeti, right, when it came here, and I, it's a, the blue, it's a blue Yeti Pro Blackout Edition. I got it, it looks cool, but it just, it's just huge. And, yeah, it, to me, I, I don't know, it's something about it, just turned me off about it, and I just, like, is and it, then is, go, it, is it because it's big and it's black and it's shaped like a phallus? That could have been it. When you put it like that. <laughs> when you put it like that, I should have never bought it. But <laughs> No, but like I had a whole bunch of gear. I wanted to do XLR and everything. And I figured let's just let's go all out and see what I could do with audio. I also have a condenser, you know, for the uh, preamp. And then I also have the focus light, which is, you know, it'll go to USB that connects it to the PC in the first place. So there's a lot of different things you could do. Um, my... Uh, the thing that I got right now, I can actually uh, put gain and control the, with equalizer exactly the way it sounds before it even goes into the computer. So it helps me, like, you know, when I finally edit and stuff like that, I don't have to worry about the sound at the end. And I think that's what my goal was to make sure everything sounds good going into the computer. Then at yeah. the end, it's a lot easier to edit because editing sound is it's not that bad. But the problem is when you edit sound, you sort of dim the sound and you don't really get like the lows anymore and stuff like that. I don't. I want to improve it. That's the reason why I'm doing it. So I figured that this mic will help me out a little bit more than the Blue Yeti. Am I doing it through software? Is really hard to do live too. Yes. Oh, so it's, absolutely. If you can, the XLR option is kind of. I would say like the the next step up once you've done the USB option for a while and you want to make a, the next step. The XLR option is the next step, but it's. It's way more expensive and way more complicated. <laughs> like, it, it really is. Like, getting that mixing board going, learning how to use it. The Focusrite. The Focusrite actually isn't too hard to use, right? Yeah, the Focusrite's easy because that's why yeah. it's able to set this up in 10 minutes. <laughs> to be honest with you, it can sound way better once I tweak it out. Cause I, like I said, I have the preamp and everything. So mm -hmm. that's what I have to configure first. And that's going to take a while to adjust it properly. Yeah. But the focus light, it's very simple. That I really can't believe how easy that device is. The only thing you have to do is make sure you download the driver real quick. And it's literally, it, like I said, it took me 10 minutes in total to do it. So it took me like two minutes to download a driver and use it. So it was real simple to do. So Yeah. It's a, it's a nice, it sounds good too. Like I can definitely tell the difference in your voice yeah. right. going really from last cool. week to this week. It's, it's a, that's a nice sounding really, microphone. Yeah, it, it's, really it's pretty, I'm very shocked about, you know, but you know. Well, we'll see what the next step is for Not Too Nerdy Channel. We'll see. There, but know, there's Twitch. always a next step, isn't there? Yeah, well, I'm trying to stream with Twitch more, and I figured that I want to improve the audio to do that because, like, I know my upload and everything, like, speed and every speed wise and streaming wise, is it's really like it's not that bad at all. So I can stream easily. So I just need something now with audio. That's what I'm worried about. So we'll have to stream some division together. Yeah, man. I that would be yeah, awesome. awesome. You know, I got I was gonna get a PC, but I think we can get both. I'm just going to get a PC just for, like, you know, P versus P, probably, to play mm -hmm. other people. But I think I'm really going to do focus on, you know, P versus E and P versus P with you guys on PS4. PS4? Yeah. yeah I'll, actually, I'll get, yeah. Both. Speaking of streaming, I saw, saw your live stream over um, last week. I believe it was Friday. Briar Rabbit. And unfortunately, I was at work, so I couldn't watch too much of it. Uh, and I was really getting into it. And Destiny is something I don't really play anymore. And uh, I could see that your audience, the people who are in the room watching, were really into it. That's something that I actually want to get into and probably uh, take the bull by the horn, so to speak. But being someone who isn't really that you know, knowledgeable when it comes to streaming and Twitch, I'm probably going to take some tutorials from you two guys. I'm talking to you and, and Mr. Not Too Nerdy Entertainment. I think we could all start streaming together. I think that would be absolutely awesome, Like especially when The Division comes out. We get on that stream together. That would be super cool. I really... I'm thinking about getting into Twitch too. I've been See, the last couple of weeks. I think OBS right now since it's free. You guys practice Dude, OBS. Fuck OBS. First. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a pain. Yeah, it's we not, know. It's not that bad. <laughs> it's buggy. <laughs> it's buggy, but like there's so many shortcuts and things to make it easier. OBS. I've been learning a lot that like you could do. It's just that one thing goes bad, 
you don't you like panic. You don't know what else to do because then if you do something else, like something else to go bad, it's like, like something OBS, else. Up. It collapses. Like it'll collapse on you. <laughs> yeah, I, like I have, I regularly have issues with OBS, and it takes me because the, the settings don't necessarily use what I would call common language, right? Is that they don't necessarily say what they do. So a lot of the time you're looking to fix something or to change something that isn't named what you think it should be. <laughs> and like audio settings are in like five different places for settings. Yeah. You know, like more, I think actually, because depending on the device you're using, it could be anywhere. Mm -hmm. uh, and then if, you know, even changing your desktop volume can, can mess it up, you know? So it's like, <laughs> there's so much weird shit going on. I, I've, that's one of the reasons I actually switched to a mixing board not too dirty is because I tried to get as much out of my computer's hands into that mixing board and then just have do the mix on the mixing board and have it go to the focus right and have all that audio just coming in yeah. from there. So like my microphone, my game audio, sound effects, like all of that stuff. I try and just get it out of the hands of OBS because I find OBS to be stunningly obtuse. Yeah, that's the reason why I'm doing this too. I don't want OBS to handle that, but the cool features I've been using OBS more are scenes, like scenes switching from going from yeah. one to next, and I just have it all hotkeys. So like different things, like if I, for example, I have another, you know, uh, I have another, like I'll switch. So um, if I want to go real quick from, you know, it's picture in picture for when you're doing a walkthrough or something, you're, you're on like the corner of like what you, the gameplay. I can switch it so that I'm large and then the gameplay is in the background in case I want to say something, go back and forth. Like little things like that that you set up pre-hand that you could just right, right away just switch to, which is really nice features. And that's more things that not everyone does. You really don't need it. But once you learn more about OBS, you, you'll see there's so many different features that are hidden. And when I say hidden, it's because no one freaking explains it. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> You know, most things you can go on YouTube and do like a search, right? Like, uh, you know, you want to change the oil in a 92 Toyota pickup truck? Go on YouTube. Search that shit up. You got step-by-step -step instructions. No problem. Go search something about OBS on YouTube. You got a nine-year-old kid <laughs> half explaining how this doesn't work. <laughs> Like think, from from six years ago. <laughs> I think because like no one really feels a hundred percent confident OBS. Maybe that's and the reason. People why. who do, I don't Definitely. think want to share that knowledge. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, <laughs> I mean, it sure beats though paying for the, the competition, even though it's way better. Uh, what's what's the other one called? The the main X one. Split. X split. Yeah. X split. Just more money, you know. And it's like you just pay for it, and. OBS is free, the free version of XSplit, so that's why you don't get all yeah. the features XSplit has. It's not as easy as XSplit. So. It's not as easy. I think you get a lot of features out of it, though. OBS has a lot of stuff in it. It, has, it definitely has a lot of stuff, and it's free. So you really, well, you can complain when it's free, but I'm just saying you shouldn't. It costs. It costs <laughs> mentally. <laughs> there is a mental payment that you have to pay every time you open up OBS software. I just did a Windows 10 upgrade this weekend. I finally upgraded from Windows 8 to Windows 10. And when OBS worked Congratulations. when i booted it back up i was shocked <laughs> i was like oh, it works <laughs> literally there's no difference between a lot of the features with oh, like windows 8 and 10 they just improved it way better so like everything that worked on 8 it's going to work on 10 without a doubt it's just that it just works better like so that's the only difference i noticed so speed wise too so yeah they, they got rid of that like other desktop too so yeah it feels the metro freaking stupid yeah. thing <laughs> that was that was weird to me that they had like two different desktops on your computer yeah all right that concludes our obs bitch Tutorial. session for the week <laughs> maybe <laughs> we might come How back to it i don't know do. <laughs> uh robbie what have you been doing this week <clears throat> so this week i've been playing couple of games. I've been playing the Uncharted 4 beta while that's been open because that multiplayer is awesome and I really, really enjoy it. I've also been playing Far Cry Primal because I'm still enjoying that game. Some of the missions are kind of repetitive, but overall I think the game is still very good. And uh, I've also been playing Guitar Hero Live because it's very fun to check out the new music every week and see what's going on with that and what they've added in. And they've added a lot of really good classic songs and I'm really enjoying it. What's classic for someone your age, Robbie? Uh, things like Rush, things like 
Queen, things like Def Leppard. They've added some Def Leppard songs, which I really like. Like I thought you were going to say Little Bow Wow or something. All right, good stuff. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like Corn. <laughs> the classics. There's a couple of Corn. No, there's a couple of Corn songs too, but yeah. Uh, got some Green Day classics on there. All right. Green yeah, Day yeah. classics. <laughs> okay, that's dude. Tough, they're though. in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Green Day is in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Really? Yeah. Yeah, they've been around that long that they could get in there. I find that to be somewhat impressive because they're still touring. You guys feel old now? No, fuck you. I'm hanging up on Robbie. That's it. That's the last straw. Robbie's done. (laughs) Now, Robbie, that's something I didn't mention. I actually uh, spent quite a bit of time over the weekend playing the Uncharted 4 beta myself. Uh, We played it a lot last night. I went to the fight last night. didn't go to bed until 4.30 last night. Well, this morning. And that's what Kate and I was playing. And we found quite a few issues as far as the network compared to the uh, initial closed beta. Did you find those issues, uh, adding party members or doing things like that? Uh, sometimes your your loadout would disappear, your custom yeah, loadout. Yeah, I remember the closed beta, there were some bugs, like there was networking issues and stuff like that. This beta, I haven't really had any connection problems. I mean, it's been pretty smooth. Occasionally there will be like the little symbol that comes up that says, you know, it's been disconnected for a sec. But for the most part, like it's been smooth the net code feels good the hit detection is on point i mean i really like this multiplayer a lot it's- are you excited let me just say the uncharted 4 multiplayer is some of the best multiplayer out there uh they really? introduced a new, a new stage yes i love it it uncharted is so good 2, i think but it, it is really really good and it's it's something different now in this new open beta they introduced a new stage these levels are huge and very, very open and expansive. There's tons of things you can do. Multiple ways to kill enemies. I just love this game. And yeah, I'm really excited about it. Really like I'm really excited one. about this primarily because the single player is really the draw for the Uncharted series. And knowing that the multiplayer is this good yet again, because The Last of Us is, for me, one of the best single player experiences of my lifetime. And on top of that, one of the best multiplayers for me personally. And it feels like they did the same thing again. I'm super, super stoked for this game. I can't wait. Yeah, I think that Uncharted always had pretty good multiplayer. I think Uncharted 3 wasn't that great. Mm-hmm. They they went down a little bit. Uncharted 2 was one of the best third-person shooter multiplayers the PlayStation had. Like, that's why a lot of people noticed. A lot of people like Uncharted 2 multiplayer. So that's why I meant, like, it's been since then. Uncharted 2 was there. Uncharted 3 is, it went down a little bit with the connectivity, and there's some issues with it. But this one right here seems like they took some features from The Last of Us, and they added it into yep. Uncharted. So yeah, I think works. that's... They did. Yeah, and it works. It works well. It works so, so good. Yeah, it, it changes up the gameplay. So I think at first people are scared because you have all these special abilities and powers or whatever. It makes so much sense, though. But yeah, but it actually yeah. blends in well in the game. It's not too OP'd, and it's, it's not too bad at all. It actually blends in pretty well with the game. So I'm actually happy with that game so far. Now, I wanted to, to before you get into what you've been playing, Briar, let you know that I've been playing a little bit of DayZ, too. Uh, we spent... Three hours, I believe, this week, Kate and I playing that game. We joined the same server together. We finally figured out how to add a friend, because Steam is very strange for me. And we spent three hours in the same lobby, and we were unable to find each other. That's how big and crazy this world was, but she actually fell in love with it. I've always liked Daisy, especially now on this PC. It really looks great. I can play it on the highest settings. Um, but we stayed in that world. We ran around. We, we scavenged and looted and killed a few zombies and hit some stuff in some cupboards, and we fell in love with that game. And she actually asked me this morning, could we play it again tonight? I don't know if we're going to do it tonight. But I just want to let you know, because I know that you think it's a very graphically, you know, uh, it's not that great. But when you turn those settings up, it actually does look pretty. pretty I've played it, and it's a cool game. Like, But I really only find that I enjoy it when I'm playing it with people. And it's yeah. because I think it's because I'm playing it with that person and we're having fun. I could be playing any game. The game itself... Like, I get it. Like, it's you, you run around, you, you can be half naked, you can rob other people, Motorcycle like I get the, all that stuff, but it's there's not enough game there for me. Yeah. And that's, you know, we've been hearing a lot about No Man's Sky. They had, like, that 30-minute developer preview, and that is my biggest fear with that game. That game looks so freaking cool, man, and I'm so scared that there's just not going to be enough game there for me. Hey, um, mm. basically, that look on your face when you finally added a friend on Steam. I just wish I was... <laughs> <laughs> yes, I was very, very excited. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. We were we had to Google it. She was on her PC. I was on mine. We're like, this is bullshit. And probably about 20 minutes later, we find it said, you have been accepted as a friend. Holy shit. Couldn't believe it. Very, very good. Succeeded that day. Briar? All right. So last but definitely not least, the captain of the vessel, Mr. Briar Rabbit. What you been doing? Dude, wow. I honestly I haven't been playing anything. Uh, really? I've been on Puppy Patrol. <laughs> Hold on, <laughs> we got a new we got a new dog. Uh, we got shit. a black Labrador puppy, and uh, that has been the bulk of my my free time. Man, it's just so like you've been taking care of that, that puppy. VR, that VR poop scoop, huh? <laughs> <laughs> the new Oculus um, game poop scoop. Like it's you a really cute. Poop. It's really cute to have a puppy, but I feel like I feel like when you have a puppy. And then it grows into a dog, and it becomes this awesome dog that you love and you're attached to, and your your whole family can you know like grab and hold and hug. I feel like you forget what a pain in the ass puppies were, <laughs> and that's the only thing that allows you to get another puppy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because how, how once you have dog? that puppy, you don't want that puppy anymore. <laughs> so how, but yeah, how I mean, I, I've been playing a little Destiny, a little bit of. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. Tomb Dark Raider Simulator still. 2016. Yeah, I'm still playing Tomb Raider. I, you know, it's just taking me forever to get through that game. I do like that game quite a bit, uh, but it's just taking me forever to get through it. But, uh, you know, Destiny, that's it. Destiny gotcha. and puppies. Gotcha. <laughs> Simulator. Uh, yep. Quick question. How old is your puppy? Uh, it is now nine weeks. Wow, brand new. Oh. Uh, yeah. Black Labs and Chocolate Labs are some of my favorite dogs. They're, they're yeah, they're cute, man. Dogs. They're cute. Quick question. I wanted to ask Mr. Uh, Robbie. Uh, last week you were playing the new Far Cry Primal. Did you give up? Are you done with that game? Did you beat that game? Have you just stepped away to play with your guitar? What's been no, going on? No, I'm still playing it, and I think at this point I'm probably going to go, I don't know about 100%, but I'm going to pretty much finish all the missions in the game because I've done most everything there is to do. I'm about 23 hours in, so I'm going to keep going. God, still Briar, do you remember how, I know that you and, and, and uh, Mr. Not Too Nerdy can remember and appreciate being Robbie's age, because back when we were 12, we had all the time in the world to play all these games, too. Okay, yeah, but I only had one game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know about you. I had one game for Christmas, one game for your birthday. Yeah. <laughs> we, we, were 100%. we played the oh, shit out of it, no matter if it was good or bad. That's why I always wanted like the longest game I could get. I didn't care how good the game was. Yep. I just wanted it to be long. <laughs> That's the thing, those old games, though. They, they could be 45 right, minutes short. It? But you played it over and over and over again now. Yeah, you know totally. I mean? that, that's the difference. Like, those games will last you hours, but in reality, if you played it without dying, they'll probably be in like 30 minutes, 40 minutes. You know? Who remembers the Ninja Gaiden trilogy, man? That was I, was, I was big into Ninja Turtles when I was a kid. Oh, yes. So my mother thought she was being awesome and got me uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Like, I think it was Turtles in Time. It was the arcade port for the SNES. Yes. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I had played it in the arcade. And I beat it in the arcade. I looked at it. I'm like, oh, great. This is like a 20-minute game. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it really man. is. Turtles, the original Turtles on the Nintendo was that one game of the hardest hard. games I've ever played. It was one of those situations where the very first rage quit started to, to be you know, prevalent in the world. People were throwing controllers and smacking their mothers. That game beat the oh, ass of oh, millions of people. Not that second one. Hold on. It was Hold really, on. it was really I only beat it two so, times in my life. You beat times. it? You're the, yes. You're a fucking wow. man. Well, I, I, I farmed. Like, there is ways you could just keep going back in. You go out, go back in. You keep farming things. And I yeah. learned that when I was younger. And I kept farming and farming until I finally got enough, like, like weapons, enough, like, uh, health and stuff like that to finally go on the Tectum Drum and stuff like that. Damn, <laughs> you were that nerdy when you were little, too? Man, not too nerdy. Not, this not, nerd runs <laughs> deep. <laughs> 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 I, I actually got that as a Christmas present, that game as a Christmas present, and I knew it was there, and I went into my mother's closet, and I opened it from the bottom of the box, and I pulled the cartridge out, <laughs> and I had been playing it for like three weeks leading up to Christmas, <laughs> and then I had to open it at Christmas morning and be like, oh, <laughs> big surprise. <laughs> Holy shit, no way. Oh, man, I got to check my kids, man. Make sure they're not doing that shit this year. Holy crap. <laughs> All right, guys, so I guess we got a little bit of news to cover this week, huh? Do we? I don't see any. Robbie, do we have news? Yes, we got a little bit. Don't do that. We got some news. I'll go ahead and get us started. Wait a minute. I lost it. <laughs> so, oh heck, I can't hear you. <coughs> Can you hear me? Off, off the rails. No, I'm just joking. 
Uh, right, the first HoloLens the development kit is now available for pre-order. Units will begin shipping in March, and it will cost $3,000. Holy yep. crap. This isn't for us. No, it's not. It's for developers. <laughs> this is for people with serious, serious money to just yeah. go. Well, three, 3K is nothing for a developer. Um, um, what? <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. Wait, developing group or develop a person? Like a person is just developing something. Oh, well, I guess it all depends. <laughs> if it's a group now, nah, what person? Yeah, yeah, it's a group. <laughs> yeah, right. Be all right. But if it's just you trying to make a little game, you're pretty much fucked. <laughs> you guys excited about VR at all? I mean, uh, AR versus VR, do you guys see them as kind of the same? Uh, no, I don't see it as the same. HoloLens looks pretty cool. Like, I remember at E3 when they did the whole Minecraft thing. Like, that looked really neat and... I feel like I'm more excited for VR, though, still. Like, I don't see why I'd go with HoloLens over something else, because this is obviously going to cost a lot. Clearly, this is a development kit, so the final product's not going to cost $3,000, but it's like, I don't know. We're going to have to see that buy-in price and just see what kind of software is available for it. I think that AR and VR have different pros and cons. Of course, with VR, you're creating a world for you to actually exist in, and everything there is from the imagination of a developer. Yeah. But AR will actually change the visual aesthetic of what you... It will make the, the recognizable unrecognizable. And so for me, that is kind of a draw for AR, to be in a room that you're very very familiar with, and maybe you might be playing a, a game where there's, you know, there might be a creature coming through a wall or a ceiling or a floor... And you're yeah. looking around, kind of anticipating that. So I think it does. It definitely has a draw. But I, I agree with you, Robbie. I'm definitely more into the virtual real, reality experience versus yeah. AR. I th I think the the AR portion of it, like a lot of people, are like, oh, that's pretty cool because you don't have to wear the giant goggles. It's not gonna be the same thing. But mm -hmm. we don't know the final specs could be because you have to keep in mind, like, it can't be as thin as like Google Glass, for example, because Google Glass, as you saw, where that turned out to be, like, not mm -hmm. too many people accepted that anyway. So that's yeah. the thing, like, do you need something like VR to, for, as a selling point to be like, oh, you need this because, of, you know, you're going to get to be in a different world or whatever, and you are blocked off from what's really there? Or do you want to see what's partially there and what's not? I feel like that's already now. Like, there's things there here that have the AR aspects already, and I don't see that being too successful as we speak. Like, that's not working right now. Like, like I said, Google Glass is a prime example of how it did not work too well at all like people thought it would be the next big thing and no one really bought into it like literally no one bought it to google glass the the psp has ar cards there's a lot of different things yeah. you can do with current hardware and you're right uh it's something yeah, but that, it's not the same i don't think is what they're going for yeah. with how lens like AR, ar could be awesome like imagine uh you know imagine if it if call of duty and google maps integrated into an ar so you could an AR game, so you could play Call of Duty in your backyard against your friends. You know, like Whoa. real life Call of Duty. It's you know, like dangerous. something like that. <laughs> or, yeah, that might get some kids somewhere wrong. Or ideas. you guys have heard about that Zombies Run app yeah, for yeah. iPhone? Yeah. Imagine that in AR. So now instead of not just hearing the zombies and like, you could actually see zombies as you run. You know, like and those zombies are catching you, so you awesome. gotta start sprinting. That sounds amazing. That, yeah, stuff like that. There's a real, there's a real application for AR, like gaming. But I think there's there's an even bigger application in like the business world, like you know architects, like being able to uh, visualize, go to a go to a building site and visualize the building, you know, from the ground level, like that Ooh, kind of thing. Yeah. I think there's there's, and, and there's big things for AR that aren't necessarily just gaming. Yeah. I, and I, and I, when we're talking about the Hololens in general, they also show that it does have functionality that you can actually create things in the 3D space and print them out on 3D printers. That was incredible to me. They they yeah. created these little, I guess, helicopter type of machines, and they were in like 3D space. You could see them through the HoloLens technology, but they actually printed them out, and they actually worked. That is bridging a huge gap between, you know, reality and virtual reality, creating something in your imagination, and then all of a sudden you're making it real. So I think that time will tell. You know, we need to see what this thing is totally capable of, but every application – that uh, you just mentioned sounds incredibly awesome, especially the Zombie Run app. That could be, you know, backed by Jenny Craig because you burned so many damn calories getting away from those zombies. <laughs> yeah, I, I think that, like what Briar said, I think that would be definitely awesome, you know, to see stuff like that, that you can move around and stuff like that. I just don't know yet. I have to see how Microsoft pulls it off because you got to look at, we're sort of limited still with power, you know, how mm -hmm. much 
how can you power these devices like that? Because that's the reason why Google Glass couldn't, were limited in what they could do. And when they, you know, they, they stretch out they, or they try to do certain things. And when they got it, it was simple, basic things that people didn't need. You really, it, it was some cool features like, you know, as you're driving, you can look through a Google Glass and you're just looking straight and it could tell you directions. So you don't have to look down or GPS or anything. That's pretty cool. That's something that it's a cool feature. It's but practical, yeah. You're, you're limited to what they could do. And it, it, it sort of becomes like you're just looking at something in the corner of your eye and it's really, you know, it, it becomes like, are you focused on what's in the corner of your eye or are you focused on the road? And it, it's, mm-hmm. you know, that, that's the thing that they have to see. And they were not, it was limited to power too. You know, how long a Google Glass lasted, how long they have to charge. It, it was, you know, it's kind of limiting the power. And I'm kind of curious how Microsoft goes about it in the future. So I, th- I think they're going with big power for this HoloLens development kit. I think that's one of the reasons it costs so much, right? Yeah, like, I mean, I hope so. <laughs> like there's it, a lot of, like, it basically comes with, like, a high-powered PC or something like that. I'd have I to say, correctly. I was going to say, does this come, like, do you have to run this off a powerful computer? Or how is this going to work? Is it going to have an so. external power box? The development like, kit, I believe ooh. so. Yeah. So that means you can't move with. So you don't think it's gonna be you can move with it. Then. Well, this is the to... development kit, though, right? So yeah. maybe yeah. maybe the full retail retail product runs off a Windows phone or something like that. Or it may run off of its own breakout box, similar to what PlayStation's doing. Yeah, and it sends a signal, and it's completely a little wireless. Little Xbox, so we'll you know, box. they could do it real fashionable. You know, put it in a fanny pack, so yeah, you, know, you look like everybody else on the street. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> I know what you're saying, what? First of all, I know I used to wear, I wore a fanny pack before. Come on. No one else did out there? I did. Lies. I did too. How about I did this too. <laughs> I don't even know what a fanny pack is. What? <laughs> Holy shit. I used to keep my Walkman in it. <laughs> oh my God, you guys are old. I keep my wallet in that shit. Dude. You guys are old. Sweatpants and a fanny pack. Yes. You used to do that on like, trips to like Six Flags or some, some amusement park. Yeah. You wear like little fanny pack. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> yeah. Damn, we are old. Shut up, Robbie. Yeah, you Continuing are. on, guys. All right. I don't know if this is news that we really could use, but thank you anyway, Robbie. Well, Sony details PlayStation 4's next firmware update, version 3.50. A beta will a beta version will be available for those who sign up. You guys interested in signing up for a beta that'll possibly break your PS4? This no. one I'm excited for because it has a Hidden fe- mode feature, so you can be playing your game but not be like the show is available to all your friends. It looks oh, like you're just... offline, offline mode. I've wanted that so long. <laughs> yeah, that's actually good. Really God, cool. especially for yeah. YouTubers. Oh, that's yeah. cool. um, there's actually some really cool features in this in this one that I think specifically like YouTubers and Twitch streamers are really gonna dig on. <laughs> Yeah. Like there's there's just a few things that just are gonna make life difficult. And finally, it tells you when easier. your friends go on or offline. Why hasn't it done that until now? I don't know. But I'm kind of happy that. Thanks, PlayStation. I mean, they, I'm happy to have people that could get you know sign up for beta. But there's no way I'm ever doing betas for something that could just like if just anything goes down. I mean, yeah. Robbie, if you want to test it out for all of us, you can, and just let us know. Just give us a report next week, and we'll definitely try it out after you. Oh, yeah, my <laughs> PS4 is for X. It's good to go. Try it. Yeah. <laughs> totally. This has been kind of in the news a lot uh, for the last week, guys. Microsoft has, quote, a lot to prove, end quote, when it comes to PC gaming, says head, Xbox, head of Xbox Phil Spencer. What do you guys think about this? They're making some big changes for Xbox. They're really trying to bridge this gap between PC gaming and Xbox gaming. Yep. Yeah, I think they're, I think they're finally serious about this. They want to turn the the Xbox and the PC into brothers in arms when it comes to gaming. This this was so crazy what he was talking about here, man. This is like if you haven't read up on this, I, I don't think we can go into it in as deep as it needs as to go into. You probably want yeah. to. Yeah. But he's talking about like a modular Xbox that you upgrade Upgrading like hard. year after year. Xbox. You yeah. know, he's talking about stuff like that that. Like, from the head of the Xbox division, I don't know if I want to be hearing it. (laughs) This is, uh, I say it last time when I talked about it, this is is not looking too good. I know people are going to be like, well, this is a great thing. Well, I'm not going to get into the the upgrading part. I'm just talking about just the PC part alone. Mm -hmm. Now, there's other developers. One developer already came out, and they stated that they were not too happy about the fact that they're forcing people to, uh, you have to sign up with Microsoft, you have to develop with, and it'll, it'll be sold on Microsoft site, and on then it has to go to Xbox yeah. One. Yeah, Microsoft Store. This yeah. is not going to be the greatest thing because now they're going to try to compete against Steam, 
And I guarantee you right now with PC gamers, for them. you're not you're not gonna win over Steam. And if you want to do that, like developers are gonna go towards Steam because they know that's where the money is. If you're gonna create a PC game, I'm okay if they wanna if they wanna compete with Steam. That's fine. I like competition. But if they are forcing developers to only release yeah. stuff on the X on the Microsoft Store, that's bad. To take advantage of that like Xbox. PC yeah. cross-platform kind of connectivity that sucks. Well, that's what yeah. it seems like now. As of right now, that's what uh. it, what it is. They said that you're developing on them, and it's every platform. So it's the phones, every every platform, Microsoft. It's it's you could do the game will be for everything, which sounds great, right? For a developer first, but if you think about, it, you're losing other PC people. And like I, I know a lot of people that would stay with Steam because now you're also don't forget about all the points and everything you had on Steam. Some people are nothing to do with Xbox, you know. Some people ca- ca- care about those gamer points, all those those sales that Steam has and all that stuff. Yeah. They don't want to go over to Microsoft because Microsoft, not to mention, is going to pay full. You're going to charge full price. They may have sales on their own. But as well, we it, speak right now, in the beginning, they're going to try to do full price. Not a whole lot of stores on the Xbox store. I, you know, I and, look and at not, the Xbox Live. Not a whole lot of sales going on there. It's not like Steam sales. That's for and, damn sure. And not, no. not only that, guys, but the Xbox store, like when you look at the Rise of the Tomb Raider for the Xbox store, it doesn't support mods. It, it, you yes. can only play it in windowed mode. There's a whole That's bunch of so things shitty. that really drop it a few levels compared to the Steam uh you know, versions on Steam. And unless Microsoft makes the Xbox Store more compatible or competitive with what Steam can do, especially in the modding community, it's going to fall flat. Like even even stuff like Big Picture Mode on Steam, you know, like there's stuff that you could you could connect to your TV and play if you're playing a PC game. Like, like I don't understand why you even need Microsoft in that sense. You could use the, the controller, Xbox controller already. You already got the PC. I don't understand... How they're trying to do it, like they Microsoft want, wants that cut. They yeah, want that. They, they don't want to give that money to Steam. They want to and keep I, that. Yeah. And I think it's because right now Microsoft Xbox One isn't doing as well as they thought it would. They're trying to get a cut from everything now. And like I understand this is this makes business sense for them, but in the long run, how's it going to affect them? And yeah, now, this is future proofing, yeah. right? In it also Xbox makes sense in the fact that if you if you want to have like that cross play cross buy functionality, it's that's not going to work from Steam, right? That's yeah. got to be in the Microsoft Store if it's yeah. going to work. Yeah. Well, in that way, with Quantum Brink, you can buy the Xbox One version or pre-order, and you get the Windows 10 version. You know, they're kind of trying to make that one unification and get people into there. Now, I don't know I'm how it's going to work out. I, li- I like that. The other aspect of it, the upgradable parts, like you were, you were talking about, this could be a disaster for console it's because great. yeah, it, it's great. so many. Like, there's so many things that like you don't even know, like. When you upgrade something to console, right? What do you got upgrading for? Speed? If you're going speed, is one is one console gonna be running 60 frames per second? What other one's not gonna reach it? If so, like, are you gonna separate the community, like, community online? That's like, how is, it, how, is this, how is it? How is it gonna do? Like, how are you going to do it? And also, are you gonna have specific updates if you have this in your in your Xbox? And if you don't have that, are we gonna give you this update? How how are they going to provide help for all the people that have all different devices? If that's I, I assume it's going to work something. It would work something like iOS or Android, where they continually are updating the software. And if you have older legacy devices, you can still install that software. But some features aren't going to work because they're not hardware supported, and it's your your device is going to feel slower and slower and slower as time moves on. Yeah, and you know, and that's that sucks. Imagine if you you know. If you bought an Xbox today and in two years they have upgraded it twice, you want to play some Call of Duty, but your your Call of Duty experience is going to be 30 frames per second. Everybody else is going to run at 60 frames per second. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That blows. Yeah, and That's not fair. Briar, last week you said, and you said something that most people say, you know, the reason why people play console games is instead of PC is because it's just easy. You, it's simple. Mm-hmm. You just plug it in you play. It's, if you're doing all this stuff, it's no longer easy anymore. It's all not going to be simple. All that stuff that used to be easy, it's no longer there anymore. Now you have to right. worry about, do I need to upgrade it for this game? Are they going to start making games that can only run if you have this upgrade and not if you don't? Like, you know I mean? Look at Nintendo. Well, the, this the, model has the, never been successful either. Yeah. Sega CD. Yeah, uh, Sega CD 32X. 32X Nintendo's up, m- upgrade memory module for yeah. Perfect Dark. Like, it, yeah. yeah, this has been tried. The and HD it is DVD not successful. Three sixty that didn't work out either. Yeah, it, it's just been a mess, you know. And like, 
there's two aspects of it that's just a mess. The upgradable part, now don't get me wrong, like we just said before, like there is some cool features that could work with it, which is the cross buy and stuff. Like that's a good feature yeah. that you could only probably get with this. But mm -hmm. is that worth everything else? You know, that, that's, that's the question, you know. I, I don't know. I honestly don't know. Like, I really don't know. I, I like that they're thinking, they're, they're getting these big ideas, right? And I don't think that this was supposed to be released to the public in the way it was. I don't, you know, it's clearly not a fully formed thought, right? This is him yeah. just spitting out ideas, kind of. Yeah. Yep. But I think, you know, especially considering the press disaster they had in 2014 after their, their Xbox kind of announcement... They need to be more careful about this kind of thing mm -hmm. because if they want the Xbox to be a brand moving forward, they need to get more fans than they have. And they need to pull some people back who were 360 fans. You know, a lot of people left the Microsoft ecosystem because of all that stuff. And this is this is scary stuff they're talking about. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, do, I agree. You want to buy an Xbox for four hundred dollars and then have to spend a hundred dollars a year to keep it to current? get the new Xbox One. Yeah, that's right? what they're gonna call it. It, yeah, it's pretty weird. dangerous. Like, I don't even know what add-ons you're going to do. And plus, like, if something goes wrong, are you going to void a warranty now? Like, with add-ons? Well, they're not going to do it with this one. There's no way. Yeah, it, it would can't be a, a new iteration one. of the Xbox One. Yeah, it would probably do be things a, like... It'd be like the next range. console. Generation. Yeah, but that's the thing. Do you think it's a next console? Or do you think it's another version of this console? Sort of like when Nintendo did the 3DS. Is it going to be like the new 3DS? Or are they going to completely move on to next console? It's the new Xbox One? Yeah, it's a new Xbox 2 1.5. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> now, Spencer's, Phil Spencer's actually called it the Xbox 2. Uh, and, man, that, that would be a, a really strange thing to see if they actually tried to release that with upgraded upgradability day one. Um, I, I do see what yeah. the problem is, is that they released this box that is outdated before it's even out, right? And that there's no way to upgrade it, so it just gets worse and worse and worse. And if you look at the PC... The PC is constantly moving. It's a constantly moving target. Yep. And at this point, I think PCs have gotten so good at running games. It's not like it was back in the mm -hmm. early 2000s or 90s where you could hit a target with a with an NES or SNES or some or a GameCube and kind of, you know, it stays relevant for a certain amount of time. The Xbox and the PS4 feel dated if you're a PC gamer. But how do you develop for that though? As a developer, how do you develop for that? What are you, what's your what's your target? You know I don't know I mean? if you could. Because you're not... You don't know not, what the next thing is going to be. It's no longer going to be a lockdown console anymore, right? Because it yeah. can't... You can't maybe have, you have a uh, Maybe you have graphical settings. Like, you know, you have... You include the high-res version of the... Of the... Uh, backgrounds or the... You know, like the... Help me out here. Yeah, like high-res res versions... What's that? Like the draw distance and like every like the, the yeah you could have like the settings you know yeah. like you would in a PC, PC game but settings. instead of having yeah. them user accessible textures if you put in the module they would just open up right yeah. automatically. The thing is though they do that they better get their their uh, sub, uh, customer support ready because people will be calling like crazy when something doesn't work right on a console. How are they going to tweak that out? Like, how are they going to yeah. do patches, everything for each individual person? Like, it's easy, right? Something isn't working right. You got a drive or something like that. You download from a computer. How are you going to oh, do that it on the console? That sucks. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I don't know. It's a, it's a weird thing. It's a weird thing. Well, I think that if, if Microsoft does that, they're going to have to prove to people before this thing is released that it's even viable to buy. And um, it looks like from what Sony's doing this generation, they're going to release a PS5, which is just going to be a game system without all this crazy up upgradability and updatability. So if that happens, I'm just going to want to stick with the PS5. <laughs> I mean, I don't want a, a gaming console that acts like a PC. If that's what I want, I'm going to just stick with a PC. Especially because you know, you're going to confuse the hell out of consumers, things. right, that don't know these things. Like, you know, your average mom and dad is not going to know what this new Xbox is. They're not going to know the difference between the old one. You're just going to confuse people. Like, this isn't... I don't think this is a good idea at all. Like, they need to be really careful with their execution on this because this could go really south for them. No, Mom. I asked for the Wii U, not the Wii. <laughs> you know how many people got screwed over with that? Oh, my God. Yeah. That, that, too. That's a really good point. That's, yeah. that's, that was people cool. thought the Wii U was just an add-on for the Wii. Anyways. Ooh, okay. Uh, continuing on, guys. Forza Motorsport 6 
Apex announced coming to PC this spring Apex. as a free-to-play version of the Xbox One game. They're trying to really bring these PC and Xbox One gamers into the yeah. same little eco chamber and make them play with each other and, and love what Xbox is. I don't mind free-to-play games, man. Some of my favorite games are actually free-to-play. But I'm just not a racing fan, so screw I, you for it. So. There's still wait. good news for people who are. I can't wait till they join everyone together, you know, like where you get to play with all the Xbox players because once yeah. there's a first-person shooter, they're going to be pissed <laughs> off <laughs> every one of those yeah. Xbox Live players because you're going to get destroyed with a mouse and keyboard, and that's a problem. So I don't know how they're going to do this. I, I don't know. know if they would ever do something like that. Games like Street <laughs> Fighter Five, yeah, they can do that. But first-person shooters, the whole, the whole mechanic of the way that you look at the enemy, it's so intuitive and fast with a mouse and keyboard. And, and moving the analog of a controller, it, it moves at one particular speed. Yeah. You move your mouse as fast as you want to. And so, so a, f- gonna a have few years ago, I bought Call of Duty. It wasn't, it wasn't Ghost. It was Black Ops. It was Black Ops. Was it Black Ops? Yeah, I think it was Black Ops for PC. Maybe it was Modern Warfare 3. I can't remember which one it was. I bought it for PC just on a lark. Try it out. PC players were garbage. I was wrecking uh, face in there. <laughs> what, were you, you playing mouse up? and keyboard? I started off on a on a gamepad because I you know I don't I don't use mouse and keyboard for gaming that much since I played Quake Three, and then I I jumped on mouse and keyboard. It was not it was not the same as playing on the Xbox Three Hundred and Sixty. Really? The player base for those shooters for Call of Duty was on Xbox Three Hundred and Sixty. Going in and playing. On the PC, man, it was like these guys were running around with chick- like chickens with their heads cut off. I was I was making hay up think, in there. <laughs> I don't think as much people. I don't think as much people played Call of Duty like on PC as much like they do now. But like it was Counter Strike. Counter Strike like is so, like, a different story, it, definitely. It, like the, same you old can't, shit. You can't do it like a one of those shots where you're like sort of like twitching like though you can't do that with, at all with uh like with a controller yeah. and it just it just sick because it looks like they don't even see the people and they, they already shot and killed them right <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> i've seen these guys on youtube who do these crazy kills with mouse and keyboard and to me it's unbelievable how fast and how accurate it is man well, i remember playing uh tribes 2 on pc and people were they were jumping around Murking people from the air, I'm just like, this ain't my game, man. <laughs> this ain't my game. <laughs> I, heard but, you, I heard you there, bro. <laughs> Call of Duty, though, that was something else. <laughs> Ooh, uh, so what do we got? Phil Spencer praises Sony and Naughty Dog on the upcoming Uncharted 4 at Thief's End. Xbox fans respond, and Phil handles the situation with complete class. How did he handle it? Oh, yeah. I'll read it to you guys right now, because this story is awesome. I really wanted to talk about this. So, anyways, a fan asked Phil on Twitter, uh, Hey, Phil, what game are you most excited for this year? So he responded with Gears of War 4. Then he goes on to say, I thought the Division beta was very good. People will block me for saying this, but Uncharted 4 will be a great game, I'm sure. And he also loved the Quantum Break story. So then, obviously, Xbox fans were pretty upset to hear that. He's Fuck excited you, for Phil! War game. So then... This guy goes on Twitter to say, Xbox head talking about how great Uncharted 4 will be, just waved the white flag already. This is embarrassingly sad to say. And then, this is the best response ever, what Phil says right here. He says, we should all applaud when a team does something special. Those who hope for a team to fail due to a platform aren't real gamers. Oh, yeah. Right there, Phil. You are the fucking Gamer man. Power. I Burn. love Phil for this. <laughs> he is the man. He's so awesome. God damn. That's, that's awesome. Yeah. That's why I like Phil, man. He keeps it real, and, and, and he's not pro Xbox against everybody else. He's for the games. and He's just he's a fan of everyone. He wants to see the games industry succeed, and he's a great guy. Like he just He's so good at what he does. He's friendly, and he's respective of every company and every brand. Like I, I think he's an awesome guy to be leading. The Xbox division. Well, since we're talking about this subject real quick, you know, Phil ruined on, you know, Uncharted 4. Don't you guys think, like, if you really stop to think about it, do you know how lucky Sony is that they did well this, like, this time, this generation? Do you realize that... It's like, it's a float in their whole company. This, (laughs) if this did not happen, there would only be Xbox and, well, it'd only be Xbox. Oh, wait, there's Nintendo Nintendo. too, sorry. I forgot about Nintendo, but there's there too. (laughs) But it'll really just be 
X, you know, Microsoft and their Xbox console, which is kind of crazy because Sony is the team that needed it, and they got it. Which is just, yeah. it's just, it's just funny how it worked out like that. So. Yeah, lucky for Sony as a company, like as yes. a huge as a, company, man, they were. Yeah, they were. Totally. <laughs> they were. They were in PlayStation Four saved them well, as a company. Pretty, pretty much, Mark, Mark Cerny, right? It was all his idea, most of it. <laughs> He's the man. Yeah. He, Call of Duty 2016 is confirmed to have its gameplay debut at E3 2016. Activision has also confirmed that Sony will once again have early DLC with this year's game. All right, so we got to wait till E3 to see Call of Duty 2016, huh? So we're good the, to hear. Well, we'll see it before then, but this is like they're going to debut new gameplay is what they said. Like, this isn't even the first gameplay necessarily. They're just confirming it'll be at E3. I haven't seen any gameplay, period, so it might be the first it could be, yeah, but I'm sure. Obviously, there will be. An Usually, they release uh, single player before E3, like yeah. they, they do. Show they announce the game what it's April be. around. Yeah, yeah, always every year. Yeah. Oh man, this is bad news because it, it got delayed for two weeks. Uncharted Four has been delayed again until May 10th. What the oh, fuck? Got a fucking. No. It's on my PS4. No. What am I gonna do for 14 <laughs> days, man? Two weeks. Two weeks. <laughs> the fourth time, right? Isn't it delayed a fourth time? <laughs> <laughs> and if it doesn't get delayed again after this. This actually burns oh. a little bit worse, guys. Mass Effect Andromeda has been delayed till quarter one, 2017. Well, well, How long has it been since uh, Mass Effect 3? Four years. This game better be good. This yeah, game right. better be damn good. All right, continuing on. No Man's Sky will be releasing on June 21st for the PS4 and PC. This game will cost $59.99. I'm a little surprised that it's full price because I think we all thought it was either going to be, you know, like a regular indie game, twenty dollars, or it'd be maybe a little more than that. I'm a little surprised to hear it's full price, but I don't know. I'm still looking forward to it. I want to see I, the content first before I, yeah. you know. I want to know what we're they all got nervous. First. I don't really care what it costs. I'm buying this thing day one. Damn right. <laughs> like, hey, hey, Brian. Yeah, I'm with you. Like, I think we're all nervous though about how it's going to turn out. The final. I product. have no I idea, watched, like what someone... I'm going to be doing in this game or how long I'm going to be playing it. But I'm so interested in this game. Well, yeah, Kevin, the not too nerdy team, actually did an interview uh, with the company that's developing this game, and he got to play for a few hours, and said it's his most anticipated game now. It's the most incredible thing he's played in a very, very long time. And I'm really a uh, big fan of, of, of the. Uh, uh, kind of funny crew, and uh, I believe what they say, so that's kind of a positive or a plus on that side for me, so I'm really looking forward to it. Do you guys realize that, like, the the pricing right is, like, I don't think they could call this game like an indie game. This is no longer that. This is nah. way yeah. more big budget now than it started out to be, which yeah. is kind of shocking. It started out like a small budget team and you know, a small game, and it turned out Four to people. something bigger. Four people in that team. You know, it, it has, look at it, it's the whole universe. Yeah, <laughs> like, so people make the fucking universe. Okay, guys. Um, and the, the reason I'm going through this fast is because we're kind of over our time, and I'm trying to squeeze this together. Six Flags and Samsung have partnered together to create the world's first virtual reality roller coaster. Now, I saw a little news snippet on this. I'm really excited for what it is, but I'm curious: is it going to be an actual roller coaster that you put goggles on? Or it is. Will it yeah, be you have the Gear VR, which into? I have. Yeah. So it's an actual roller coaster. Yeah. You actually get on. I, th I was thinking more Universal Studios type, a big black room. You go sit down and, uh, you, know, you know. Like the moving platform thing? Yeah. And you yeah. Got wind blowing in your face and stuff. Okay. So the idea of this is it's a like an actual normal roller coaster, but then you wear the Samsung Gear VR, which is what I have. You wear that headset with the phone inside, and then that's what you're looking at while you're riding the coaster. So you know you're kind of like turning and tossing around, and then you're looking at like this VR exploration in space. Like, this could be really neat. I think this sounds... It would be better to have some antibiotics for those, uh, for those goggles. Hey, wouldn't you rather just go on a regular roller coaster? Huh? <laughs> and, and what happens if, you, what happens if I don't know. God forbid, there's some crazy accident, and, and you're your car gets dislodged from the track and you're falling, but you think you're flying? Oh, God, can you imagine? No one even knows that they're falling to their death because you're just, you're looking in space. It's, yeah. yeah, you know what would be cool? They should do this, all right? They should have plenty of different things for you to choose so your experience will be different from different someone from else. The next guy. And then oh, you actually yeah. choose it and you go on a ride. So then after the that ride, be cool. like, oh, I chose this. Well, this is awesome. You got to try it next time. So the next time you go, the same ride, it's like a different ride. Hell yeah. Yes. <laughs> three for, oh, that's a great idea. They're going to steal that from you. Next they change it up. That would be incredible. <laughs> it's wow. called the Total Recall. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, continuing on, Nintendo is allegedly funding development of Beyond Good and Evil 2. 
It will be exclusive to the NX. <laughs> again. It's been four years. Beyond Good and Evil 2 confirmed again. Yeah. <laughs> Apparently, it's still happening. For like the eighth time in the last ten years. <laughs> yeah, it's been, it's been ten years, too. Good, good for them. It's good to hear Nintendo might be getting some uh, exclusivity deals. Uh, it's been kind of bad for them, so way to go, Wait, Nintendo. Is NX allegedly. confirmed yet, or no? It's, it's allegedly. Don't, <laughs> set up. We don't fucking know. Uh, the Division Year One content has been fully detailed. Robbie, you want to run through this real quick? Yep, let me open this up. All right. So this is basically all the content coming to the game, both with paid expansions and free updates. So when the game launches on March 8th, the first piece of content we'll be getting will be in April. It will be an update called Incursions. It will add endgame content designed for teams of four players to fight seemingly unstoppable enemies for high-level loot. The update will also add loot trading, which will allow players in the same squad to trade loot collected during co-op awesome. sessions. <laughs> The next free update, titled Conflict, will follow then in May, and brings a new Dark Zone feature, as well as an incursion into New York's Columbus Circle. Ubisoft also went for, into further detail about the three paid expansions that were announced earlier this year. Firstly, Underground will release in June, and sends players to hunt enemies in the tunnels and subways that run under Manhattan. The second expansion, Survival, will release later in the summer, and adds a Horde mode style of gameplay challenging players to survive for as long as possible in a very hostile environment. Finally, Last M will arrive this winter and tasks players with a new relentless threat. So, that's pretty much the year one content for The Division. What do you guys think? I think it sounds hot, man. I'm oh, glad yeah. to know that there's going to be like continued support for this game, and it sounds like it's going to be coming out fast and furious, too. Yeah. Like, guys, I'm excited more... the fact that they're saying it's year one. That excites me right there because that tells me they're going to have. That no indicates a year two it. will be next year. Yeah, yeah. This is this is the first game to take the Destiny model and uh, do something awesome with it. I think we're going to see much much more of this in the future from developers. Man, they, they know this is Sounds a great way dope. to continue have a continuous stream of money coming in, and as long as the content's engaging, I'm super excited. I think the division's going to be a hell of a lot of fun. I feel start like start talking, not too nerdy. I feel like they're uh, <laughs> definitely taken out. Like they're trying to take out Destiny. I feel like oh yeah, they're the aimed, their sites are aimed at Destiny. Like, yeah, they it are. Seems like it really seems like everything about this is sort of like what they're. I mean, obviously different game, different style of game. I'm just saying, like it yeah. just seems like they're trying to take the audience. So the same exact audience that plays Destiny. I mean, did, did you see the advertisements they had this week? The end of the day, I, I didn't know. <laughs> yeah, I mean they they referenced Destiny right in the uh, the advertisers, what? but yeah, they were. Um, I can't remember the specific quotes, but the quotes you know, were that, that taken cool from quote. articles yep. that were art out of context too. Like, you know, oh, like uh, one of the one of the articles said, like th this had an even bigger beta than Destiny, yeah. and they put in the uh, advertisement bigger than Destiny, like, <laughs> wow. you know, like that kind of thing. Well, yeah. a telling sign, guys, is that Briar Rabbit's excited about this game. I've He's been excited no since for this game. You guys know this. I've been excited for this game since 2014 when we first saw it. Like, this game looks yeah. amazing. We got to play the beta. It plays really well. I'm looking forward to getting, you know, a group together, going in, exploring, fighting this through these, like, you know, massive, you know, whatever the whatever is offered. Like, I, I don't know what the end game is going to be for this game. I don't know if I'm going to be playing it like I am Destiny for, like, years on end. But I am excited for this game. It looks like it's going to be a lot of fun. Wait, and I maybe. love the fact, too, that you, they're adding you know these paid expansions <laughs> with lots of content, but then they're having free endgame updates. That's awesome. I love yeah. that they're doing this. They're really respecting the player with this, and I think this just sounds good to keep the game alive. I'm going to predict what's going to happen in the future. We're all going to be playing, and you're going to be like, where the hell is Nazi Nerdy? Oh, yeah, he's looting someone right now. <laughs> That's all I'm going to do. <laughs> Loot, like, the whole time. <laughs> well, I, I found it interesting. One of the updates is that they're going to change the way the Dark Zone operates you know so like really? we're gonna have the dark zone yeah. and then the dark zone's gonna change at some point you know so that's cool oh wow Ooh. yeah like i mean i'm excited for this game i've been excited for this game for a long time it's coming out in i mean Two if you've got a box copy you can play it tomorrow yeah and if you know if not then you can play it in two days or less than two days like 36 hours i'm yep. grabbing mine i think uh, it's finally time Tomorrow night, I'm going to be on Division as soon as it unlocks. I cannot wait to play with you guys. That is going to be awesome. Yeah. like I, I'm going to burn through that story. I can't wait to see what the, the end game is, and I can't wait to start like looting everything. You know, I like the way you can go into missions and just play them over and over again to like you know farm for loot. I like that. That's fun to me. Yeah. You know, I'm hoping that you know the four of us can get a fire team going. We better. 
and just you know like the bring we can play in the dark zone we can play in the regular game and you know some of my greatest memories from destiny still are playing with uh, not too nerdy and inner black ninja like those first few days when we didn't know anything about the game the the whole world was fresh and brand new you know yeah there's still some of my best memories about destiny and we're about to have that all over again in the division i'm really excited for it really excited right, guys. Right I'm, I'm, I'm down i'm down so if, if you guys accept me as a friend i will, I will run with thee now of finishing up if, <laughs> shut up <Bobby. laughs> finishing up our last little bit of news for the week and uh this is going to touch mr rabbit right in the heart oculus rift will be available for mac once apple decides to make a good computer says oculus ceo and founder <laughs> palmer lucky yep that's exactly what he said he said the macbook pro their strongest computer still doesn't have a good enough gpu for it they will release oculus rift on mac once the computer is good enough that's as simple as it is it has intel onboard graphics in, the, in that macbook and uh yeah yikes it, sorry briar brah <laughs> Bru. <laughs> you just Bru. struck the stake right through your heart <laughs> at least my computer works Oh, <laughs> how many times have you replaced your PC lately, Beastly? <laughs> In the last three PCs years, how many here? PCs have you had to buy? <laughs> uh, I bought, I bought two. I bought this one and my last one. Just one. <laughs> one Mac. All right. <laughs> one, one Mac. <laughs> there could be only one. Right. I, you know what? Windows 10 is a nice operating system. It, it really yeah. is good. And Windows 8 was. Hot fucking garbage, though. <laughs> sticks. It was pretty bad. Yeah. All right. So that's going to do it, guys. All right. All right. All right. Sounds good. What is everyone doing next Whatever. week? Whatever. <laughs> you know what, I mean? what, what are people doing next week? Right. <laughs> yeah. You're just going to end it like that? I'm right. playing The Division. I hope I'm playing it with you guys. I'm going to be streaming the shit out of it, too. So. What platform? I have it on both, but what platform? Uh, well, I think this is a PS4 crowd, so... Yeah, I think we're going to be playing it together here, on PS4. Phil Spencer. I'm going to be playing it on Xbox One and PS4. Yeah, me too. I'm but with you guys, I'll be playing it probably on PS4. Or I'm doing PC and PS4. And it's it looks like night, guys. that's literally the message I just got from my email saying that it was, it's going through. It's being shipped. I thought it was supposed to be here on Tuesday for Amazon. How is it being shipped today? It's kind of crazy. Amazon is full of crap. Yeah. Most <laughs> FedEx sense, guys won't even right? come to your door and they'll say they in there. Bastards. I don't know. Hopefully they're a day early. Who knows? Maybe. The division. It's a date, guys. Let's do it. All right. I'm going to be up at midnight. I'm going to like sleep all day on Monday and just wake up at midnight and start playing. Unfortunately, guys, I got a lot of stuff to do this week. I'm going to play with you for sure, but I got Fuck some your corporate. responsibilities. The division, <laughs> dude. I'm going on a cruise, brother. Dude, fuck that cruise. You're gonna, how did you schedule a cruise for the division release date? What is wrong it's with you, Beastly division. Gamer? I'm going to be you fucked up, bro. <laughs> You fucked up. <laughs> but I'll definitely be on with you guys. I'm looking forward to that. Um, <laughs> All right. That's going to do it for this week's Beastly Thoughts sh live show. Is this episode 101 or 102? 102. 102. 102. Oh, okay. I mistitled it. We'll be live next week, guys, with episode 103 every week, every Sunday, 3 p.m. Pacific time. We come to you live. Just want Unless to say it's thank something you like so Christmas or the Super Bowl. Yeah, then unless we're away. Not so just much. check Twitter and we'll tell you <laughs> if we're not going to be doing or, the show or a cruise. every week. <laughs> Every Sunday we'll be live at 3 p.m. So uh, thank you all very much. I will be alive next Sunday at, at 6 p.m. in America. Nobody cares about Canada, Robbie. So to say Eastern <laughs> time. Guys, what the hell, Coast. man? It still counts. 3 p.m. <laughs> 3 p.m. Pacific time. That's what I said. You guys are a bunch of dicks, and I still reiterate that. <laughs> <laughs> We're still live, Robbie. <laughs> Unfortunately. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna stop the stream. <laughs> you you didn't stop it already? <laughs> no, he he just he got the best part. <laughs> That's so good, man.